Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video of Fox Flicks on the Kaiju Profiles. Today, we're checking out the complete history of Bagon. And let's go! Hello Kaiju fans, I'm Super Godzilla Game, and we'll be taking a comprehensive look at the demon beast, Bagan. Uh, Bagan, that's how it's pronounced. Got it. Good the mysterious music. ancient god Bagan, also known as Bakken for his first intended appearance, is a monster <laughs> whose only Bakken. official appearances were as the final boss in the 1993 Super Nintendo game Super Godzilla and the 1998 PC game Godzilla Movie Studio Tour. Nah. Bagan was a personal favorite of Godzilla creator Tomoyuki Tanaka and is particularly well known among the Godzilla fandom for his numerous planned but ultimately scrapped film roles throughout the 80s and 90s. Damn. Without further ado, you let's never commence. Got any love. The love. first proposed appearance of Bagan, or maybe actually Bakken, we'll get into the name confusion in the trivia section, but for now let's just refer to this incarnation as Bakken, was in Resurrection of Godzilla, right. a project which existed as a 47-page proposal by Tomoyuki Tanaka in 1980 as a revival of the Godzilla franchise. No concept art exists for Bakken, and this artwork is an artist's interpretation oh, yeah. of the monster. The 1980 Bakken was an ancient shape-shifting like god monster together. that took three different forms. It started out in its monkey beast form, but after being wounded, it morphed into the dragon beast form, and later dove into the water and turned into its water beast form. Oh. After Godzilla was awakened by yeah, nuclear okay. dumping in the Pacific, and drawn to Japan in search of more, more nuclear fuel, he fought and defeated Bakken. Sadly, this project was dropped by Toho because of concerns that it would be too risky to produce such a big budget film, even with Godzilla's name attached, Bakken's transformations being the source mm. of the concerns. Yeah, Unknown to most, however, there are multiple versions but of this project. The, the second major version is the one to actually introduce the famous Totem Bakken concept, commonly associated with the yeah. Resurrection of Godzilla title. In 1983, Akira Murao and Hideichi Nagahara collaborated on a revived script for a Resurrection of Godzilla, which while very close to Tanaka's 1980 proposal, differed in a few ways. How so? This time, each time Bakken changed form, it healed itself. Also, when it ran into Godzilla, finding that it couldn't defeat him in any single form, it transformed into a towering combination of its three forms. Bakken managed to temporarily cool. defeat Godzilla in this stage, though it soon found out that it could no longer change shape, meaning it could no longer heal itself. This allowed Godzilla, who was revitalized uh, by nuclear energy, weakness. to rise back up and defeat the exhausted Bakken, who would die out at sea. As more That's revisions good. were made to the story, Bakken and other elements were removed altogether. Ultimately, the idea was replaced by what would become the return of Godzilla. The art most commonly associated with the so-called Totem Bakken was artwork yeah. made by suit actor Hurricane Ryu Hurricane and published in the it Encyclopedia of Godzilla, Neck Godzilla that. edition. Two more versions of Bakken, whose name was modified to Bakken now, were proposed for the 1990 and film Mothra vs. Bakken, a movie starring Mothra that would have been set in the same universe as the Heisei Godzilla series. Bakken's three-form monster concept would briefly live on in the first version of the new Bakken, now in the forms of a spirit god beast, the monkey god Ooh. beast equivalent, a dragon god beast, a mix of Bakken's dragon god beast and water god beast forms, and a demon god beast, a replacement of the water god beast. As Not development bad. continued, special effects director Koichi Kawakita thought I the shape-shifting element I was unnecessary, it. and so removed it. An ancient demonic beast that destroyed the world's forests, Bagan was sealed away in the Himalayas long ago by a clan of Mothra, only to be reawakened in the modern day by global warming. He began his savage attack oh, against humanity, destroying some warming. remote villages in the city of Calcutta, but was eventually confronted by Mothra. As the fight between the two monsters took them to Bangkok, Mothra's egg hatched, and the larva arrived to help its parent, and with their combined powers they were able to end Bagan's reign of terror. A mortally wounded Mothra then carries Bagan's unconscious body out to sea and seals him away again before perishing. Wait, While the storyboards well. featured Bagan with an appearance, Design B, similar to the canonical Bagan look, Design A, it turns out these were placeholders, as Bagan's look had not yet been finalized. This demonic yeah, looking oh. concept, created by Yasushi Nirasawa, was the one intended for the final film, I had like it been made. It. Unfortunately, as Godzilla vs. Biollante did not perform as well at the box office as Toho had hoped, they decided not to risk making another movie with another new monster, and thus the movie was cancelled. Damn. This same version of Bagan was planned to go on to face Godzilla in the tentatively titled third entry of the Heisei series, Godzilla, Godzilla 3, 3, since as was mentioned earlier, Mothra vs. Bagan was going to share continuity with Godzilla vs. Biollante and the return of Godzilla. Continuing right after vs. Biollante and where Mothra vs. Bagan would have ended, it's learned that Bagan was allegedly created by aliens, who were responsible for the ruins of the Nazca civilization in Peru. Aside oh, from this, the there's not much lies. to say. Nice. Once Mothra vs. Bagan was thrown out, so was Godzilla 3. When Mothra vs. Bagan was scrapped, 
writer and director Kazuki Omori briefly thought about adding Bogan to Mothra vs. Godzilla, a proposed 1990 movie that would have had Godzilla hmm. fight Mothra. However, cool. fear that Mothra's appeal would not be enough to draw in audiences meant that this idea ended up being shelved. The concept of having Mothra fight the King of the Monsters would be revived later, however, and elements from Mothra vs. Bagan's script would be thrown in along with Batra for what would become the 1992 nah, Godzilla vs. Mothra. <laughs> Bagan was to face Godzilla in one of Kazuki Omori's earliest scripts for a Godzilla vs. Biollante sequel. In a July in 2006 Vantage Point interview, Omori mentioned that Godzilla vs. Bagan was one of many drafts where Godzilla was pitted against a variety of different foes, and that it was another year that went by after the cancellation hmm. of Mothra vs. Bagan. However, with King Ghidorah turning out to be of one of the most popular monsters in polls among Japanese audiences, and with Toho's 60th anniversary rapidly approaching, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah ended up being made instead. Bagan was potentially considered for another film, was, also though, titled Godzilla vs. Bagan which according to Takao Okawara, was an early version of Godzilla vs. Destroya. I heard about Godzilla vs. Bagan while Godzilla vs. Destroya was being planned, but I didn't hear anything about its plot. Rumors at the time suggested that the story would be very much like Godzilla vs. Giant Monster Varan, in which Varan is described as being a harbinger for the end of the world, awakening in 1999 oh. and dead set on ending all life, but ends up being defeated by Godzilla and Little Godzilla, though not set in the future. Bagan took the place of Varan, with Mothra and the Gotengo from Atragon set to appear nice. as well. That's good. Ultimately, the shape-shifting monster Barabori would be favored, and that concept would eventually transform into Godzilla vs. Destroya. And uh, Not outright boom. discarding the idea years earlier of having Mothra face off against Bagan, the monster was also considered by special effects director Koichi Kawakita to appear in the Rebirth of Mothra movies. Nothing ever came of it, however, Wait, and no further details Mothra are known. With, uh, Bagan's Leo last Mothra? proposed appearance also was Yamato Takeru 2, an unmade 1997 sequel to Toho's 1994 fantasy film Yamato Takeru, also suggested by Kawakita. According to the book Heisei Godzilla Perfection, Bagan was to play a role in the movie alongside Orochi, it went unproduced apparently uh, after Rookie, Shogo Toriyama huh? delayed production to 1997, following the first movie's <laughs> not-too-impressive box office performance, as well as director Sorry, Takao folks. Okawara apparently having read the script and saying that it was simply no good. Damn, come on, guys. Bagan received a starring role as the final boss in the 1993 video game Super Godzilla, starting off in his energy form but soon transmogrifying into a familiar form. Born in super ancient well, China and supercharged by the cells from Godzilla and King Dora that his unnamed alien commanders had spliced into him, Bagan is easily the most powerful foe in the game. Generally, he is seen it as is impossible to defeat as normal Godzilla, and is still seen as a difficult opponent even as Super Godzilla. This version of Bagan possessed very high physical strength and durability, and his array of attacks were the strongest used by any enemy in the game. Damn. Additionally, he had the most health out of any enemy, and regular Godzilla's attacks would only cause a very small amount of damage, making it necessary to transform into Super Godzilla to defeat Bagan. Also, according to John LeMay's The Big Book of Japanese Giant Monster Movies, The Lost Films, the unnamed alien antagonist from SNES Super Godzilla is actually a recycled version of Alien Miko from the unmade 1972 film Godzilla vs. the Space Monsters, Earth Defense Directive. Pretty interesting. Kind of a long title Godzilla well, Movie Studio Tour. Bagan's last appearance was in the 1998 video game Godzilla Movie Studio Tour, alongside Godzilla and Degolas a monster oh. who only ever appeared in this game, in the publicity department, a game mode where players can create and even print out mock posters for their custom movie. Nice. He also appears in the kid's shop in the form of a printable sumo wrestling tabletop game, with his opponent being Godzilla. Thus, <laughs> with this, that ends the sense. legacy of Bagan. <laughs> Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating... Sorry about that. I didn't see that an ad was coming. The Bakken from Resurrection of Godzilla had three separate forms. An ape-like sacred monkey beast, yep. a fish-like sacred water beast, yep. and a winged sacred dragon beast. Yep. Each form could only be used on land, in the sea, and in the air, respectively. respectively. Also, each form was individually said to be a different color, with only the sacred water beast color being known through its description of having green slimy skin all over its body, a face somewhat reptile-like with a wide-opening mouth, and hands with fish-like fins for swimming. For the 1983 draft, like an additional fourth totem-like form was written in. No official contemporary concept art exists of any of these forms. When Bakken, now Bagan, was revived for the first version of Mothra vs. Bagan, it had three distinct forms, like the original. According to nice. Shinji Nishikawa, Drawing Book of Godzilla, the only form which was specifically described was the Spirit God Beast, equivalent to the original Monkey Beast, which was mentioned as having a figure like an elephant. In you know what I just realized? 
What if this form of uh, bargain actually uh, became kind of the inspiration for the uh, Titan that we saw in the uh, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, or Godzilla King of the Monsters? Behemoth? No, no. Yeah, no, yeah, Behemoth. And what if this kind of became Behemoth? I mean, it's an elephant. It's upright. It's got long tusk. Y'all see what I'm getting at? Yo, you do. You see what I'm getting at. In addition, there were the Dragon God Beast, a mix of the Dragon Beast and Water Beast forms, and Demon God Beast forms, a replacement of the Water Beast. Nice. Widely varying concepts were submitted by Shinji Nishikawa, Minoru Yoshida, Hiroto Aragaki, and Takashi Sonoyama. The little about these kind of pieces would seem to have been carried over to later designs. As development continued, however, special effects director Koichi Kawakita decided that Bagen would only have a single form. For this second yeah, version, fine. Nishikawa and Yoshida continued submitting art with the addition of Yasushi Nirasawa. Yoshida and Nirasawa steered the direction of the monster's look, with one uh. of Yoshida's concepts, Design B, being used in storyboards, while Nirasawa's demonic-looking concept was decided upon as being the final design. Even Down I the road, this rejected tote and red concept by Yoshida, dubbed Design A, would end up becoming Bagen's canonical design. Design A artwork <laughs> would go on to be yeah. commonly placed alongside information regarding the Super Godzilla Bagen, and even recolored <laughs> to more accurately match the video game sprite in Super Godzilla. I wonder how that went down. It's like, we've decided to go with this demon beast uh so design a has already been published that's oh crap well we're going with design a then sorry demon beast slip and oh come on <laughs> that probably pissed some people off <laughs> Still an official guidebook, though it's not actually the exact source of the video game Bagen's appearance. Another piece of concept art by Minoru Yoshida was created for Bagen's final form in Super Godzilla. Differences between the game design and the design A Bagen, aside from coloration, include the lack of bulbous orbs in Bagen's legs, back, and shoulders, and the Ooh. shoulder and tail protrusions being more akin to spikes. Bagen's energy form is a tangled mass that pulsates green, bearing some resemblance to Biolante's nucleus. Oh, yeah, the I movie studio that. tour Bagen design, in reality a posable character model created by the toy company Kyoto, is based off the design A Bagen, though it has a gray armor coloration with dark brown like horns and spikes, color. purple orbs, and no fur tail tip. Like the shape shifting. Than the in the 1980 version of Resurrection of Godzilla, Bagen was capable of shape shifting while it was in contact with the correct elements, meaning it could only be in its flight based form in the sky, its water based form in the sea, and its land based form on dry land. Hmm. The Bagen from the 1983 so version fire, also had like the added door. ability to heal himself when changing form, and an additional fourth form which lacked the ability to heal. In Super Godzilla, Bagen starts out in its energy form. Once Godzilla approached it for battle, it emanated bursts of white light and transmortified into its final form. Flame attacks. Bogan's sacred monkey beast form in resurrection. Like some kind of JoJo meme. It's like, oh, you're approaching? I can't kick your ass from a distance. <laughs> that, that's funny. Someone make a JoJo meme out of that. I'd love to see it. Godzilla possessed a flame breath attack, electric and light attacks. The original sacred dragon beast could blast lightning from its mouth. In the second Neat. version of Mahara vs. Bagen, Bagen could fire invisible energy from its claws, likely a precursor to the Super Godzilla incarnation's slasher claw attack. This ability <laughs> is mentioned in scene 15 of the story draft, where he crumbles a, a monastery just by pointing at it. He also fires a light ray from his forehead horn, and another beam from his mouth in a storyboard. In Super Godzilla, Bagen fires a mouth beam or plasma beam and he could shoot white star-like objects from his horns, an ability known as either the Horn Laser or Diamond Storm. This Bogan like also has an unused that ability called metal. Beam Horn, fired from his prominent nasal horn. Water Abilities The original Sacred Water Beast could fire a liquid ray, literally a stream of water. Meanwhile, <laughs> the second version of 1990 Bogan could hilarious. create whirlpools when rising from the ocean. The original Water Beast, first version of 1990 Dragon God Beast, and second version 1990 Bogan are all adept swimmers. Life. The original Sacred Dragon Beast and both the Demon God Beast from the first version and yeah, Decided Design sense. from the second version of Mothra vs. Bagen all possess physical wings, wings giving them fly. the ability to fly. Storyboards for Mothra vs. Bagen depicted the monster projecting wings of light from his back, also used to fly. This ability oh. was carried over, but Not left bad. unused for Bagen's canonical Design A. Bagen's energy form is also able to levitate. Body spores. Energy form Bagen can spawn small, fleshy body spores, which he used to easily destroy Tokyo. Physical oh, abilities. Damn, that sucks. The original sacred monkey beast form was mentioned to be an extraordinary jumper. Also, both Design A and Design B Bagans possessed extendable claws, movable horns, and a whip-like tail. 
The video game iteration possessed these Not abilities bad. as well, but they were left unused in the game. The video game Boggan additionally possessed very high physical strength and durability, including an ability called Forceful Tackle. Boggan's attacks were the Damn, strongest used by any enemy in the that. game. Defensive mm. capabilities. In the 1983 Resurrection of Godzilla Draft, Bakken could heal when changing forms, though could no longer change form and heal once it entered its demon beast form. Bakken's decided design from the second version of Mothra vs. Bakken had black armor, which was highly resilient to physical attacks. The Super Godzilla Bakken had the most health out of any enemy nice. in the game. Normal Godzilla's attacks would only cause a very small amount of damage thanks to Bakken's hard skin, bone-like hardened skin that covered the entirety of his body, making it necessary to transform into Super Godzilla to complete the game. He could also generate a force field to block incoming attacks. Weaknesses. The 1983 Bakken could no longer change form and thus heal once it morphed into his final demon beast form, allowing Godzilla to defeat him, while the 1990 Bakken was weakened by Mothra's poisonous powder. And here we go Did you know that Bakken, standing 150 meters tall, is the tallest monster in the Heisei series? Well, depending on the source, Wait, really? he's tied with the Heisei King Ghidorah and Mecha King Ghidorah who are sometimes said to have a 150 meter stature, though mostly they are said to be 140. It's kind of complicated. Check mm. out this video explaining it. On that note, at 280,000 oh yeah, metric that. tons, Boggan is the second heaviest monster in the entire Godzilla series as of this video's release. Several oh, of Boggan's wow. unused concepts would be repurposed for other monsters. Waste. This includes the Ultraman monsters Killazi and rebuilt Biru Gamera and potentially the Godzilla trading battle monster Balxerdan, who has lightning-based abilities similar to Bagan. That's kind of cool looking. Shinji Nishikawa and Minoru Yoshida, who did many preliminary drawings of Bagan, also worked on the show Superstar Fleet Sazer X, meaning one of them could have designed the Bagan lookalike, Reizaus. Reizaus is a space monster that bears a striking resemblance to the God of Darkness, and he is featured in a hoax video that is often incorrectly passed off as cut footage of Boggan in Godzilla Final Wars. Reizaus' true is design inspirations Boggan. aren't known, but it's possible that these similarities are more than just coincidence. Finally, let's talk about the Bakken and Bogan name debacle. A majority of yeah, sources talking about the Bakken from Resurrection of Godzilla have the creature named after its 1990s reinterpretation, Bogan. While Bogan was meant to be a revival of the 1980 concept, Bakken's name was slightly altered and seemingly retconned to Bogan ever since. While material containing Bakken's original name is scarce, three sources exist that specifically mention it. While the reason for the Bakken name change is unknown, it's possible that it was because the name contained Baka in it, which translates from Japanese as idiot. Another reason yeah, was that both monsters were regarded as being the same thing by Toho, so it would have been easier to just call both of them Bakken. Oh, and in a peculiar coincidence, Bagan translates from Indonesian as blueprint or draft. An interesting thing oh, to note, considering okay, that none of the proposed films involving him were ever made. And that's all there is to Bagan. Thank you for watching. Hmm. Well, folks, I gotta say, that was kind of an interesting one. So, I want you all to remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Down in the description will be a link to the original videos. And so, remember to support the original creator and all they do. And I'll see all of you folks next time when we flick on. Peace out.